Good evening, everyone. Hope you are staying safe. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the final session of Navigator, which is on career opportunities in the IT industry organized by the Computer Science Student Association of University of Kalani. I am Jenny Fleming, the moderator for today's session. The CSSA is one of the most dynamic student bodies in the University of Kalani and it is the pioneer academic association of the Faculty of Computing and Technology. As per the faculty's vision to become a center of excellence in creating and propagating the knowledge in computing and technology for sustainable development, the CSSA was formed as a student body with the aim of enhancing an undergraduate's potential by organizing a wide spectrum of activities and events that would help them grow. As you all know, the IT industry has expanded wider in the past few years and career opportunities in the IT field have increased rapidly. Cybersecurity, networking, artificial intelligence and data science along with software engineering are some of the key aspects of computer science. From these panel discussions, we hope to cover the career paths in all those fields and to clarify all your questions you have as an IT enthusiast. We are pretty sure that this series of discussions will guide you all with your future career paths. As I mentioned, there are many principal areas of study within the computer science. Among them, software engineering plays a major role. Software engineering is a process of analyzing user requirements and then designing, building and testing software applications that will satisfy those requirements. Software engineering is a career that helps you to unleash the creative person inside you and find effective solutions to problems in the world. It is a promising career because the field is so broad and encompasses a variety of roles related to both computer applications and systems. You can work in most industries because they all use software. Therefore, software engineering is highly demanded, provision with thousands of career opportunities around the world. Before moving on with the session, let me take a moment to introduce our guest speaker for the final session of the Navigator Discussion series on career opportunities in software engineering. Today's guest speaker, Mr. Chamit Vijayasundra, obtained his Bachelor of Computer Science degree and Master of Computer Science degree from the University of Colombo School of Computing. Having broad knowledge in various architectural platforms, development environments, technologies, and frameworks, he has gathered extensive knowledge on enterprise application development over 10 years with the latest industry level technologies. Currently, he is working as a technical architect in Vertisha Private Limited. So let's move on to today's session. If you have any questions or need any clarification, feel free to ask them using the link we share in the chat box. And those who have joined through YouTube Live, you can comment your questions at the end of this session. Mr. Chamid will answer them for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Chamid Vijayasundra. So Mr. Chamid, the stage is yours now. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the introduction and uh, thanks a lot for inviting me for the session. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, all. So we are going to, you know, today we are going to talk about the career opportunities and uh, basically the uh, most importantly, what employers expectation uh, from the uh, freshers, from the engineers who are joining from the universities, right? So uh, I have prepared some uh, a presentation, right? So let me uh, try to share uh, with you, right? So then we can uh, go with that, right? Uh, Jenny, please let me know once you can see the screen, right? Okay, fine. Okay. So yes, we can see. Okay.
a software architect working in Verdusa. So having 10 plus of years of experience, right? So, so since that we have uh, limited time, right? So we'll jump into the session, right? So we'll, uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, the, basically the opportunities and the role responsibilities and also uh, the expectations, as I mentioned, right? So, uh, so before that, I got some uh, questions, right? Uh, problems, the clarifications from you all. Uh, what are the things that you need to know, right? So based on that, I have, uh, you know, narrowed down my uh, speak as well as the presentation, right? Uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, uh, the way uh, it narrates based on your questions and all. Uh, so we will uh, drive like that, right? So uh, who is a software engineer, right? So that is, I think, a first question. I think it's kind of a uh, very, I would say, uh, a different question. I mean, uh, so I got this phrase from internet, right? So it's kind of a general term. Software engineers are computer science professionals who use knowledge of engineering principles and programming languages to build software products, right? It's kind of a general statement, but uh, uh, there are a variety of roles, right? Uh, and uh, designations and all this kind of a general statement, right? So we'll go and dig into each and every area. So uh, high level is, so I can give the understanding to you all. So what are the ways, pathways, and uh, what are the soft engineers are doing in daily basis, right? So what are the things that you have to improve yourself, you know, to be a good soft engineer in different terminologies, right? So, uh, so before jumping to that, right? So I just uh, spare my time to give some insights to you uh, about the uh, what you have to do, right? So, so th this is actually I have gone through some curriculums on different universities, right? So you can see, right? A good curriculum should uh, consist of. Uh, uh, some rich contents, right? So this is actually my uh, categorization. I mean, it's not the standard thing. I just uh, put these things uh, uh, in a categorization, right? So you can see, I mean, basics are there. So normally for a computer science degree, uh, so programming should be there. So other concepts like object-oriented design, data structures, right? And computer networks, mathematics for computing, those things are very basics, but those are very mandatory, right? So those concepts that you need to learn very well, right? And also the advanced concepts like concurrent programming, distributed systems, computer security, right? Image processing, operating systems, those kind of advanced areas. And also once you are coming to the industry, right? Uh, there should be some supportive subjects, right? So that you can uh, you can feel the industry, right? Let's say if you're in second year, third year, I mean, I think it's a mix of uh, audience that I see, right? So let's say web application development, right? So it's not a mandatory thing for a computer science degree, but yes, uh, that it should support, right? So let's say enterprise application development, middleware, design patterns, data-driven designs, those kind of things, right? And also emerging technologies, right? Let's say if, if uh, the degree consists of cloud computing, microservices, event-driven design, streaming, DevOps concepts, right? So those are actually uh, very important and as well as it's, uh, it's the latest trends, right? So why I put this slide, right? Because that you need to understand why those are there in your degree, right? Because that the program is preparing to you uh, to go to the industry and practice, right? So that is what, but basics is must, right? So basics and advanced concepts are must, right? So other things are supporting things, right? So that keep in mind, keeping in mind will uh, go uh, for our things, right? I mean, so, uh, and also another thought, right? So why, why are these degree programs having uh, these kind of things, right? Self-learning, presentations, assignments, viva, uh, lots of things, right? So the more you do presentations, more you do viva, right? More you do individual projects and group projects, right? Your strength will be increased to work in industry, right? So that is the target of these things, right? So uh, before jump, jumping into the opportunities and searching about the opportunities and all, because anyway, opportunities are there. So don't worry about that. Lots of opportunities are there globally in Sri Lanka, lots of companies are there, right? So don't worry at all about the opportunities, but what you have to do, right? What you have to do is you have to strengthen your profile, 
right since you are still undergraduates right so you can still do that i mean do more presentations i mean let's say if it is a individual project full focus give the full focus right exams and all that you can increase your conceptual knowledge right so i will come into that right i mean uh, group projects that you can you know uh, you can uh, Uh, get the experience how you can work with a project multiple people like right? so because uh, I, i will tell you example right so once i'm uh, doing some interviews I, i'm normally doing interviews right so i got a candidate uh, her, her academic records are fantastic right so first three years she is in uh, dean's list right so that means gp is very high right in the third third or fourth year i can't remember the the scores are very low why i asked why so because of the group project and some of are not performing right so because of that problems and then it is ended up with a failure so see this is scenario right so that you how you uh, lead the project how you can uh, get the baton and either the other pro- other people are having the issues that how we can uh, drive the project right those things that you learn right so it's kind of a uh preparation for the industry right so that's what i'm telling uh, put more focus what are the things that you are doing today right give uh, the fullest on that right so that is my uh, there is one of my uh, notice for you all right so coming to uh, the expectations right um, the employer's expectations and or what you call as employer's priority right Uh, one of the best priority and one of the best thing is that you have to learn about and you have to practice the problem solving skills right uh, so this is uh, this you know chart that i got from internet in hacker rank right site that you can see the most of the employers right uh, the problem solving uh, percent i mean let's say as a percentage right so it's 94.2 that means uh, the employees uh, problem solving skills are very high that means that those are the categorization of uh, the most you know uh, successful uh, projects and all right so that's why so you have to develop yourself to solve the problems let's say if you are very fluent in java if you are very fluent in python if you are very fluent in some framework so but right but but if you can't give a solution right if you can't think of a solution for a given problem then matters right so first thing is uh, uh, so keep in mind that as well right so while you are doing your assignments and all right so since that you are undergrads right so practice those things right so plan segregate i mean segregate the problem and find out the solutions right so practice that right it's you can do even from a assignment as well right Uh, do that correctly right so then you are you are practicing go for a you know uh, industry right and also analytical skills right how to analyze a scenario or a given problem to give a solution so actually these analytical skills and problem solving skills are going together but these are two different things right analytical skills is also a very you know a high priority skill skill set i mean you know right so languages the concepts those things that you can learn but these things you have to practice right so these are very important things that i'm i'm actually giving you the insights right and uh, finally the conceptual knowledge right conceptual knowledge knowledge means i mean example right object oriented principles or design right so those are concepts someone build those things data structures algorithms concurrent programming distributed concepts right so there are people who build the concepts but normally it, it, those are exceptional people right but we have to use some concepts someone built right let's say design patterns right so those knowledge those knowledge i mean those are very important right so you have to be very um, uh, careful uh, and also you have to be very uh, uh, um, you have to put very much effort Uh, to do uh, to practice those things right and uh, yeah so plus that you should have good attitude communication skills right time management quick learning ability teamwork those things are coming uh, as proficiencies once you uh, you know uh, comes to a company or a project that once you are going to work on a project right so those things that you have to build so uh, 
so i gave this uh, you know insights uh, before jumping to the opportunities uh, to keep in mind uh, opportunities should come right so there are lots of opportunities only thing is uh, only thing is uh, that you need to uh, uh, know about these things right the most important things right uh, while you are doing uh, searching on opportunities uh, searching on other tools frameworks those kind of things right so that's why i uh, i have gave uh, some uh, kind of insights to you uh, keep in mind while we are doing the session those are the you know uh, very important stuff right uh, okay uh, so um so there are lots of um, confusion about the titles right so there are lots of titles right so let's say uh, soft and terminology right right front end developer back end developer ui developer operations engineer and uh, and also devops engineer right uh, i mean uh, those kind of uh, you know um, engineering uh, roles that we can see in the industry right so um, i think you guys also have that confusion maybe because that uh, once i got these uh, you know questions that uh, from you guys right so that maybe uh, you have some confusion so let let us clear those things right so we can even you can ask questions uh, uh, if uh, if there's anything uh, put into the chat right so we can discuss it going forward right and also full stack engineers and devops engineers right so those are the emerging things and latest things that we are discussing right uh, so uh, uh, when it's come to the software development right so since that we are talking about software engineering right uh, what you know right you know uh, there are requirements there should, there should be design and there should be developments and testings and uh, deployments right and then it will go to production and to the users right so this is a normal uh, whatever the methodology that you are using these are the normal things uh, you know right so there are some other things as well so that's what i need to uh, elaborate or explain uh, about the roles and all right so and also this one right so this is a is very small uh, use case that you can see for a web uh, portal development or web application right so normally uh, there's a backend that means if it is if there's a database that you need to fetch the data and also uh, some uh, backend component you have to get some data and push back to the client that means uh, to the browser or the web website right uh, so in that case uh, uh, client side scripts are there right so client side scripts that they are connecting to the apis which is developed by backend developers uh, and then uh, uh, sending the request response to the front end and showing right so those are the this very basic uh, example uh, i just put in here that uh, to set the object objective right so then that you are aware on these things right then we are going to narrow down and uh, discuss about more complex scenarios right so i hope you all aware of these things right uh, so normally front end developers they are doing this html css and javascripts and back end developers they have different different technologies right so we can discuss it going forward okay uh, so uh, i know that you you guys are more aware of the developments uh, the you know whatever the languages programming languages like java javascript node those kind of areas right so this is one of the things that i need to explain bit more um customer experience right or uh, use experience right so we call as cx and ux customer experience and use experience right and ui ui definitely uh, you know right ui means user interface designing someone is design a web page html css right so we call those as user interfaces right so before coming to the user interfaces right there should be uh, some way who some person need to design the uh, interface right so uh, we call that as user experience or ux right so there are areas i mean uh, user need to uh, interact with the computer the usability i mean 
example, right? So if you are if you are building up a notification system, notification. Let's say you logged in a portal, there should be notification shown to you, right? So then user experience designers need to think and uh, they need to decide where this notification icon or bell or the banner or the pop-up should show, right? So it's based on the user behaviors and users, uh, you know, interviews, user researchers, right? So we have to understand where we should, you know, place those elements, right? Developing the elements is up to the UI, right? But user experience is something else, right? So we have to get that uh, usability, those kind of areas, right? Uh, so customer experience, right? Customer experience is kind of very uh, high level thing. I mean, uh, normally, usually we are not touching that area, but uh, let's say if a company have a product, maybe a web page, right? So user experience is uh, only for that, uh, you know, web page, but customer experience means it's overall, like, so how the company uh, marketing their you know products how, how they ad advertise those things are there right so that is why it's an umbrella within that we have user experience and under the user experience we have UI the implementation right so that you see now there are roles coming out right so user experience that means UX designer right so it's a role which is there in the industry right and we we already know UI designers are there UI developers are there, front-end developers are there. So, so the first uh, first role, I would say UX designer, right? You can see uh, there's a there's an image, right? So this is one of the workshops that we had in London, right? You can see there's a user researcher is there, user UX designer is there, some of the BAs are there, right? You, you can see what we are doing in here is after we do the uh, user research, right? So there are some fillers that you can see five fillers, actually six fillers. I have put the wireframing and prototyping to one, right? User research that you have to go to the client premises and interview the users and get their pain points, right? Pain point means that what are the problems in their systems, right? Opportunities, those things that we have to grab, right? And you have to uh, map the personas, right? Persona means that you have to uh, understand what they are doing, roles and all, right? And all you have to build the information architecture right it's kind of uh, the user maps the user journeys those things that you can see the sticky notes right so those are the things that uh, you know it's it's very nice right so you can see it's a very nice job it's very interesting right so this is one of the areas that you may think of right because normally everyone is going for a software engineer right but these are the areas uh, you know once if you have a very innovative or you know artistic mind right you can go for those things, right? So you, uh, UX design, I mean, inside this UX, you have multiple roles. I mean, UX researchers, UX designers, there are lots of things, UX architects, right? And once you have developed uh, some information architecture with user maps and all that, you can come with a wireframe, right? Wireframe is kind of a, you know, even a paper, you can sketch a wireframe, right? And uh, uh, there are some wireframing tools as well, right? So let's say Adobe Photoshop, you, you know, Adobe Photoshop is some to edit the photos, right? So we all do that, right? But but anyway, uh, Photoshop is being used for uh, prepare the wireframes as well, right? So it's the uh, primary level of a uh, journey, right? Journey map, right? So you can just sketch some uh, using a pen or something like that, even a paper as well, right? So this is the primary, a stage of uh, building a web page, right? Or uh, any product, it should not be a web page. Actually, actually it should be a product as well, some uh, desktop application or mobile application, right? The wireframes, right? So then the prototyping, right? Prototyping is uh, kind of advanced wireframing. Uh, that means you have advanced tools. Uh, one of the latest tool is InVision. This is a widely using one, InVision Sketch, uh, Adobe Illustrator, right? So those kind of uh, tools being used. Uh, so in that, what they are doing is the designers actually build uh, build the tool, build the website uh, using exact colors, uh, exact uh, fonts, exact uh, images, those things. They are, uh, you know, widths, heights and all. They are building a prototype, right? So this is actually uh, which we can show to the user, right? But it is not built by HTMLs, right? HTML, so any uh, product related technology. This is only to showcase 
showcase and get the approval, right? So then we'll go for user, user testing, right? So show to the user is okay. Is there anything to add, delete or modify, right? So then it will be, there will be refined processes and then we'll go for uh, the UI part, right? So that means UX designers work is to hand over a prototype, fully fledged prototype for the UI design for UI developer to build, right? I think you got the point. Uh, this is actually a very interesting area that you just go and search, right? Go and search in internet and uh, there are some, uh, you know, uh, webinars and um, some YouTube videos, right? So you just search on UX, UI and CX, right? So then you can get some idea, right? So I just give this insight that this, this area like this, that you can, you know, uh, you can go, right? So if you have artistic mind, innovative ideas, and you can definitely go for that. And if you are uh, like to travel, right? So here you can see, so this is a workshop that had on London, uh, right? So then we have to go to the client premises and talk with them. We have to understand what they're doing, right? It's very interesting, right? So have a mind, have a thought on that, right? So, so then the front end developer, right? So now you know about UX, right? Up to some extent that you got the idea, UX designer, UX researchers and all. So then the, the UI developer or front end developer, right? So it's coming to the picture, right? So uh, we call as client side developments, like they should flow into in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and especially there are trending frameworks like Angular, ReactJS, right? Uh, and also uh, uh, he or she should be uh, awareness of the cross browser, cross platform, cross device compatibilities, right? So if you are, so let's say a UX designer give you the uh, prototype, right? So let's say that prototype, there should be a mobile prototype as well. But if you are developing that, you have to be very careful on uh, the browsers, right? Uh, let's say different, different browsers have different, different uh, behaviors, right? So uh, there are some technologies like media queries and all to decide the way that you are developing, I mean, let's say if the screen size is lowering, so then your, uh, you know, uh, page should be adjusted to better user experience, right? So those things, the user uh, interface engineer or front end developer need to be very uh, key, keen on, right? And the other things, right? So uh, issue troubleshootings, proper version controlling, right? Uh, closely working with UX designers, right? So this is one important thing and also closely working with backend developers you see right so ui developer is kind of a bridge between ux and the dev actual functional developments right so uh, it's kind of thing right so uh, there are a lot lot of trending uh, going with uh, these front-end developers uh, and also uh, there are some people uh, which is uh, which are who are actually uh, doing only the css and html only the web, um, uh, you know, web sites, right? And also there are some people who is passionate on Angular React with functional programming, right? So it could be uh, either way, right? So, but we are encouraging to do, uh, I mean, full stack, right? Full stack means um, even there's a full stack, many full stack, right? So, I mean, backend uh, front end is another full stack, even UX and uh, UI another full stack, right? So we'll, we'll decide, discuss those things, right? uh okay uh a full stack designer right so you got that idea right full stack designer is a person who can handle both ui and ux right so you can see i, I got a nice picture from the internet i right? do can see ux design who is doing research wireframing and prototype ui design and and the final front end view right so all the things we call as full stack designer right uh, design process, uh, I mean, thought process, creativity, curiosity, right? So those kind of, uh, if you have that, you know, skill set, if you feel, right? So I think it's better to, uh, you know, uh, go and explore this world, right? And full stack designing, UX and UI, those kind of areas, right? And uh, so, yeah, so I, I will not go to more detail that I think you got the points, right? So we can discuss over the Q&A session if you have more questions, right? So this is actually thought process. So basically thought process and creativity, tools and all that you can learn. I mean, Envision, uh, Sketch, those are actual advanced tools, but you can use and you can learn, right? So those things that, uh, you know, uh, we are focusing on uh, full stack designers and UX designers, right? 
Okay, so this one, I hope you all know, backend developer, which we call as a functional programmer or backend uh, engineer, right? So it's a server side development. So widely using technologies like Java, Node.js, I mean, Python, right? And frameworks like uh, Django, Spring, I think Spring is a very, Spring Boot is a very famous tool now, now uh, famous framework, right? Dot .NET, those kind of areas that uh, the people are working on, right? So along with that, um, you have uh, you have to work with some technologies. I, I just put some things, right? I put some icons to get some insights, right? So some cache, you have to work with caches, databases, streamings like Kafka, those kind of things that you have to integrate it through uh, the backend. Uh, there are some integrations from front end as well, but uh, mainly on backends, right? And uh, normal day to day works, right? Issue troubleshooting, uh, code quality standards, right? This is one of the most crucial thing, right? Code quality standard means that which you are, if you are writing a code, you have to make sure that there are different levels of uh, code quality standards, right? The smells, vulnerabilities, coverages and uh, uh, bugs, those things that you have to reduce and you have to remove, right? So there are some tools, right? Uh, example, Sona Cube, right? So you have to check before you commit the code for a repository that you have to check whether is any bugs, smells, vulnerabilities, those kind of things, and you have to code, right? And also you have to, um, if you are a web backend developer, you have to work closely work on a CI/CD pipelines. I will explain that bit later, uh, continuous integration and continuous uh, delivery, right? So these words, uh, if you're not familiar, just, you know, just have notes and go search in internet, right? Because those are the, things that widely used uh, concepts, tools, and uh, processes in industry, right? So if, if those are new to you, just note down and search, right? So then uh, it, it should be, I mean, even within you guys, you can have uh, good conversations, right? And also uh, peer reviews, lead reviews. I mean, if you are doing some codes, this is actually common to all the people, right? It's not only for the backend developer, even UI developer, if you are doing some coding, just get reviewed by your peer. That means one of your colleagues and then a lead, right? So then you're safe, right? And also then bug free, uh, there's no problems in the code, quality standards, those things that you have to be very careful. And also developer side, there are testings, right? We call as unit testings, J unit testings and all. You have to cover your code with proper J unit percentage, right? Coverage percentage, right? So those things that you need to be very careful once you are uh, dealing with the uh, code, because if, if you are working with a real-time project, those are matters, right? So those things we are expecting for a, a from a developer, right? And uh, full stack developer. So now you got some idea, right? Full st full stack means uh, full stack means um, the multiple programming language proficiencies, and also um, you can see. Uh, if someone can do both, right, front end and back end uh, development, right? So that means uh, we we can call these as uh, full stack developers, right? So there there are no hard and fast rules, right? So you know uh, differentiate uh, and uh, is a full stack developer or not, right? So it's like the thought process and your uh, willingness, right? If you are if you are passionate to do both uh, front end and back end, uh, you know uh, DevOps. Right, so those things that uh, we call that as full stack developers, right? I mean, uh, in a given project, uh, based on the project that you can work on multiple areas, right? Let's say you have to use uh, CI/CD pipelines, that you have to use AWS um, deployments, and you have to log into the Linux boxes, right? Do some Linux commands and uh, you know deployments and all. A devel as a developer, so we call that as full stack. So we are actually uh, eagerly searching for those uh, people, right? So because those are the very uh, uh, valuable uh, people, right? So that keep that mindset. Don't limit to any area. Just uh, learn everything and pick what choose for you, right? So example, right? So now you know there are full two full stacks, right? So full stack designer and full stack developer, right? So what do you think? I mean, let's say if you club it together, it's kind of a 
very stream extreme uh, role right let's say if you are like to do full stack design as well as full stack developer so that means if you think uh, then you are doing ux ui and back end and everything even devops right so it's really good but the thing is in practical terminologies right so let's say if it is a devops person who is doing ux so then maybe a parallel work will be a problem but but still right but still you can choose right you can do right so there is one of the things that i need to highlight right so um, uh, those are the basics and i mean there are no i mean since that i put some uh, you know uh, languages and some tools in here there's no standards right so either uh, it's based on the project or the you know the work that you are carrying out that we can categorize as full stack right so uh, operational engineer right so it's kind of uh, Uh, nowadays it's uh, becoming a hot topic uh, all the operational engineers are convert into devops and also you know the automations are coming to the picture right so if you uh, generally generally uh, will discuss right so managing bills and maintaining run books right and also execute uh, software developments deployments root cause analysis and implement automation right so if you can see uh, the just think about the labels as well like right? the because i put those things to given insights again right so aws docker kubernetes jenkins red hat right so those things that what they are doing is operational engineers they are actually managing the infrastructure right executing the deployments software administration alerts right alerts means once you deploy the code to production right so you have to monitor right there are proactive alarmings that if there is something happens that you have a message to the phone right in aws this is automated right so you can uh, auto scaling capabilities right so alarming or those kind of things that uh, the monitoring uh, aspects also there right so there are very strong tools like elk uh, and negios checkmk right so those things are working as uh, uh, operational engineer they should know right uh also software patching and upgrades uplifting network storage only those kind of things that uh, you know operational engineer should know so now since that we are moving to serverless architecture so that means cloud ready applications now this operational engineers cost being reduced right so that's business owner as a business owner they are going to reduce the cost right so that means all the things are going for automation right if you know automation so that means uh, you are going for automation devops engineer but uh, the operational engineers cost will be reduced so that's how the uh, you know uh, uh, industry is now moving right and also devops will discuss but it's kind of kind of uh, another role that i would say it's kind of a culture right uh, Uh, that i have i have mentioned that to you i will explain about the ci cd or continuous integration and continuous delivery right so uh, if you can see this right so this is kind of a ci and cd server what will happen is so i i'm just going to explain a bit on devops right so developers are committing you can see right so in here uh, what you can see is uh, developers they daily uh doing the codes and committing to a repository right so there are different branches uh, the different uh, you know code repos right so then they, we can uh, we can schedule a hook what we call as a hook right so then in the ci server right all the things happening automatically like manually what you have to do is you have to check out the code you have to build and you have to do the testings uh, generate testings and all but in ci server all the things are automatically happening right so the builds and static code analysis that means your code quality checkings and unit coverages and also if there's a fail build and notification going and then it will after the build success this build artifact it should be a jar file or wav file or any file based on the you know platform it will be pushed to a, a repository another repository we call as artifact repository in here it is nexus right so then anyone can pick um uh, to deploy onto any environment right so they will test environment so production environment right so this also automated right so all the things are automated uh, the human interaction is going to reduced right so devops are coming to the picture few people working on this automated uh, infrastructures no need to have multiple people who are monitoring and who are doing the builds and all right so all the things are scheduled 
and automate right so this is the culture this is the way that the industry is uh, behaving right industry is going right so you can you have to learn on if you are a, if you are going for a devops position that you have to learn on jenkins like pipelines i mean the ci servers like jenkins and how to configure these automations right so these are there are lots of very variety, variety of things right so if you are even the vulnerabilities right so if you are building a project that you want to check the vulnerabilities right so there are different servers to do that right it's fully automated uh, architecture right that you need to work on uh, once you are working as a devops right so i will i will uh, if it if the time persists we'll come to this right so this is kind of a agile process that we need to discuss but we'll uh, omit this one at the moment right so uh, devops engineer right uh, devops engineer that uh, now you know right it's kind of uh, um, you, you can imagine it's kind of a person who do both right is is that correct devops person doing both is that correct or practically is that possible just think is that possible right if you think about the shifts and all i mean uh, let's say uh, developers are doing the codings and operational guys are monitoring supporting and all there are passionate people doing both in most of the cases what we are doing is devops uh, recognized as a culture right developers are there operational people are also there so both of the people collaboratively uh, working towards to uh, get the devops culture that's what we are doing right but uh, but anyway uh, it's open i mean even you can write some codes even you can go to uh, pipelines and configure you can uh, monitor those things that you can do it's very highly encouraging to do those things right but but we are, that, that is extreme situation but we are going for that but anyway we have to build that culture so normally i personally don't uh, you know prefer the devops engineer word because it's not a engineer it's kind of a culture right so let's say if there's a person who is doing uh, angular coding right in some cases it's not practical him to go for linux administration right there are practical uh, things are there but it is uh doable thing right if you have the mindset you can do that but what we do is as a project as a companies as uh, you know as uh, uh, individuals what we have to do is to build that culture devops culture to eliminate the unwanted or un i mean uh, duplicated work right so that is the basic idea okay uh so i will come to this later right so we'll uh, we'll discuss about this right uh, this is kind of a summary right um, summary and variations right so what are the things that we discussed so far right so actually i didn't give much focus on testing because i i don't think the testing we can cover much uh, within a one or one and a half uh, hours of time right so we'll get this as a separate topic but we will discuss if you have any questions we will discuss right so you think right so so uh, as a start there should be proposal comes right so that means if it's a project or product development or no all the you know the proposal will come first right so we have to prepare the proposals and all right so then uh, this ux phase is starting uh, the discovery user researchers identifying the user pain points opportunities right they are creating the mind maps journeys and all right and then a prototype being passed to the front end development team right so they are starting to do the uis and html css and frameworks and all right and then parallelly in to that parallelly the back end development team is doing this uh, their back end work and also they are they have to work on uh, some of the you know uh, operational aspects as well let's say if it is a pipeline cicd pipelines they have to they should know right so those kind of things that they need to know and testing will go on right so after the completion of these things testing will go on and then deployment is coming right so this is uh, this is what we call as devops and uh, operational team right so they are actually working on uh, different things i mean let's say docker and kubernetes are very famous things now let's say uh, uh, if you need to orchestrate if you need to um, easily deploy your applications you can use docker images 
you know, Docker container that you can use, right? So if you need to uh, orchestrate Docker images, Docker containers, you can use Kubernetes like tools, right? So those are very nice things, nice concepts that you can learn, right? So it's no harm to learn those things, right? Because um, again, I'm telling uh, in your level as undergraduates, right? Give full focus to the degree plus the concepts, right? Let's say you, you got some concepts today, right? Let's say the UX stuff, right? Those are concepts and you can see the, you know, what are the things they do. And also uh, even in uh, UI or backend development, right? The caching, the, I mean, uh, distributed uh, computing, concurrent programming, multi-threaded functions, right? Latest trends, right? So uh, don't go to a uh, very low level, uh, just learn those things, concepts, right? So then uh, plus that you have to full focus on your degree. So that's what we expect from an undergraduate, right? As a company, as an industry. So we expect the conceptual knowledge uh, and the, uh, you know, pro um, problem solving, analytical, those kind of things, right? But since that we have the, you know, different, different areas that you need to learn those things, right? Uh, additional to that, uh, nice to have, those are nice to have, right? So you have to learn those things, right? Concepts, right? And also the monitoring, right? This is also a very nice topic, right? Let's say if you develop something and, you know, deploy to production and that's all, right? It's, it's, not, it's not all, right? So if you are a developer, you need to see how your code is behaving. Let's say you develop some code, now thousand users are coming, uh, and it's okay. Let's say after two months, so they have increased the user base. Now the user base is 10,000, right? Can your code bear that uh, load? I mean, infrastructure is there, we can uh, scale, but the, your code, I mean, concurrent uh, code or distributed code, like so, that the thing that the monitoring is coming, right? So in the monitoring that you can have nice dashboards, you can see how the journey flows, right? Elk is one, I mean, Kibana, right? So Elastic Search, Logstash and Kibana, right? So this is one, uh, one of the greatest tools that you can see the journeys, the usages and all, right? So Nagio, Shapecamu, all those things are like that. So this is what we call as monitoring, right? So this is kind of a holistic picture and also testing, right? Testing also a very crucial thing. Uh, you have to do some uh, performance testings and automation, Selenium automations, and also you have to find the bugs and all, right? So uh, this is uh, this is what actually you have to keep in mind, right? So let's let's do some variations in here, right? So I think we'll do some nice thing, right? So if you see, this is UX, right? So UX plus UI, you can mark it as a what? You can mark it as a full stack design, right? So uh, front end development with back end development, you can mark it as a full stack. Like even some of are uh, going further beyond and going develop deployment as well, right? And if you categorize those two, right? Deployments and back end development, we can call this as DevOps. Right. Also, you can combine DevOps with monitoring, right? So this is one thing. Another thing, right? And uh, finally, the extreme, extreme, uh, extreme thing, right? So if you are doing UX, you are doing UI, and you are doing backend development, and also deployments, monitoring, and everything, right? So this is a kind of an extreme person who are having, who is having uh, knowledge on everything, right? And also testing is there. In there are some cases, the development teams are also doing the testings, like test-driven developments, and there are different different uh, angles as well, right? But um, the testing mindset is different one, right? So that's why I didn't combine that into this one. But there are a considerable amount of testing that even development team or the you know. Uh, support team also doing right but still uh, it's up to the uh, you know um, the mindset that if you are finding a bug right you have to be in that mindset right if you are a developer uh, you are not in that mindset right so you have to 
prepare that mindset if you are doing hardcore coding so then sometimes that you may not see any bugs right so but anyway if you can parallelly develop those mindsets that it's very good right that's very good but uh, since that we need to you know uh, focus on uh, the you know smooth deliveries a smooth uh, deployment that we need to segregate those things right so uh, those are the things right uh, yes so uh, jenny uh, so i i can cover some of the things or else uh, i mean it's up to you i mean we can go for question and uh, q and a sessions right so i have something to uh, discuss i have omit some areas right so uh, so these are the things that i have uh, planned for today so we can go for uh, questions that you can uh, uh, we can discuss right okay fine sir uh, thank you mr tamit uh, that i given a brief and um, elaborated uh, question of questions to clarify all the questions and now yeah. is the time for the questions guys uh, the participants you can give a feedback on today's session while the q and a session is going on use the link provided in the chat box to send us some feedbacks to enhance our works on the next sessions uh, mr chami shall we go on to the questions yeah yeah we'll go ahead yes as we moving on to the questions uh, mr chami uh, the first thing they have asked about the business analysis how about the mm -hmm. business analysis job opportunities in sri lanka and they have yes. a brief explain yes 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 actually uh, so I, i forgot to tell that right because uh, Uh, business analyst right so opportunity wise yes there are lots of opportunities right so i will give a brief on that one right business analyst is coming to the uh, ground on the ux uh, phase as well right once we are starting the ux the business analyst uh, playing a crucial role in there right to get the requirements get the user behaviors and all right so um, job market perspective yes there are lots of openings i mean uh, uh, by considering the business analyst what you have to uh, master is one thing is communication skills right you have to be very keen on communications how you deal with your customer i mean how how to say no very polite way how to grab the opportunities because business analyst do a large role when it come to the um, you know uh the project acquisitions and you know uh, dealing with the clients right so anyway yes there are lots of opportunities uh, i mean uh, there there are no problems on that yeah. yes, uh, the other question is which belongs to something like uh, what are the key differences between a software engineer and an architect ah uh, yes it's like this right uh, first of all you have to know who is an architect right architect means someone who built or give solutions right uh, engineer means who are doing who is doing some implementations right so let's say architect architecture means that you are building building something right so why why uh, the architect should uh, have some time in their career right so let's say uh, five to let's say 6 to 10 years of experience right so because that he is dealing with multiple multiple technologies multiple uh, you know problems problem solvings and all he is a person who will give the solution right and drive drive the i mean drive the team towards a you know successful goal right so basically architect means architecture the project that means solution that, that's the difference but anyway <coughs> sorry for a engineer as well he can be a architect right you can be a engineer as a designation but role as a architect right so that's not a problem so it's that's a major difference uh, i would say yeah thank you mr another one is uh, going on with the words what is the difference between the full stack developer and a full stack engineer in the, those are the same things same same uh, terminologies i would say because uh, developer and engineer right uh, engineering and development i mean uh, there are no difference i would say because uh, full stack developer 
and full stack engineer whatever the things that you are doing now let's say based on the project based on the areas that your expertise on it's depending on the area that you are working there's no uh, you know segregated uh, uh, between developer or a engineer engineer is a general terminology right but developer means let's say uh, qa also engineer right qa engineer uh, operational engineer all the engineers like all the software engineers right but developer means they are doing developments right but full stack means some stack right multiple stacks right so when it's come to development if he do multiple stacks that means ui plus development uh, sorry ui plus back end and also then we can mark it as a full stack right development developer or a engineer it's up to the uh, place that we are doing the development yes and uh, while you're talking on uh, with some sort yeah. of uh, names uh, some yeah. roles may be equal yeah, while we are going mm -hmm. on with the names such as what are the difference between the project manager and a business analyst mm. uh, yes a project manager so let me uh, let me again share my screen right so if you have time uh, okay anyway so that's fine i mean we'll go without the screen right uh, sorry uh, uh, project manager is a person who is facilitating the project right that means uh, he's a person i mean uh, nowadays it's kind of a scrum master i mean most of the project managers uh, who is expertise on agile uh, scrum and all right so they are actually maintaining the process right how the team uh, performing and uh, you know uh, drive the team i mean those kind of areas that project managers are expertise on and also managing the team i mean uh, uh, you know facilitating the daily scrums and all that that's kind of a overall uh, responsibility is going for the project manager business analyst is a person who is dealing with the client right let's say if you need to have some discussion with the client to get some uh, requirement or some clarifications or some um, let's say revenue information right so then business analyst is front facing right is he or she is a person who is uh, handling the client in the first place so then project manager is uh, coming to the picture when it's come to the team management right so normally so in agile terminologies like the, we have scrum masters right so normally project managers are playing the scrum master role it's not it's not a standard even a tech lead or a engineer they can play a uh, you know scrum master role right so it's it's that's a segregation actually it's a two different streams right project management is a different thing and uh, business analyst is a very different thing yes next one is is there any possibility to become a project manager if he has started the career as a developer yeah yes it's very good i mean so we call those as technical project managers right lots of people are changing their tracks right uh, even i mean let's say if you are joining as a, a software engineer or developer or someone like that uh, any again given point of time he or she can change his track yeah he is so track right that means it, why i telling it's good is because he knows the he or she knows the technical backgrounds the architectures and everything right so keeping those in mind he or she can go as a project manager knowing the uh, background of uh, programming right so that is really good thing it's 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 actually not a big deal i mean you can change your tracks yes while they're going on with the engineering degrees and computer science degrees uh, mm. aspiration is to work on abroad overseas mm. but um, having a degree here and can we go out and get a job uh, directly mm. but we can't what are the qualification and the requirements we need to get a job overseas right forward mm. yeah so uh, it's like this right so anyway uh, without the qualifications also you can try i mean it's bit hard i would say right but anyway if you have a proper degree i mean all 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 of our degrees are good right so in sri lanka right so so you can apply right so but um, if you are going abroad first thing is you have to check right so what are the opportunities out there in i mean let's say you are, you are, you are going to choose some country right Uh, uh so there are a couple of things that you have to, you have to think through right so there are some countries they are actually uh, working with their native languages right so there are some countries like netherlands right so then you have to learn the, let's say japan right 
Japan, Netherlands, Korean, like even they are working, they, they are native languages, right? That is one thing that you have to make sure that you know those things. And also technology perspective, uh, you can uh, you can uh, go for exams, right? Because no will uh, be an advantage, yes. Thank you, sir. Well, going on to the next question. Uh, nowadays, uh, nearby, within a year or nowadays, there are some issues in uh, private universities and government universities, mm. uh, which are when we are going after degrees, searching for a job, uh, what would make us to stand out of the competition mm. with this uh, private ones and the government university ones? Uh, you are talking... Okay. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like doing... this, Jenny, right? I mean, so normally, uh, it's a, it's not good to categorize, right? I mean, what we have to prioritize is individual, uh, uh, you know, capabilities, uh, you know, individual um, commitments, those things, right? The degree, I mean, let's say if you get a government degree, right? So, if you see the curriculum. Um, mostly it's the common things right so even uh, even for the private universities the same curriculum is the same set of good lecturers are there there's no difference right only thing is uh, you have to be very keen i mean let's say in some cases a government uh, government students uh, having uh, some uh, let's say uh, uh, good knowledge but the thing is if you are if you are a if you are a uh, undergraduate from a private sector they are also very good because it's not the university right it's the mindset right uh, so that that's what it's not we can't compare anything right because normally lecturers and facilities and all um, we can put as a second thought right only thing is as an individual how you get the knowledge right so you have to be either you are in a uh, private university or a government university you have to be uh, up to date right so let's say there are some degree programs um, some up to date information are not there like let's say cloud computing those kind of things right but it's not a problem right so you can learn uh, i think there is no problem with the degree or the government or public sector thing it's not a, actually it's 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 nothing right Main thing is individually how you uh, improve yourself or how you uh, uh, plan yourself to do uh, for, to go for a good position. It's up to you, right? So let's say if you are not putting that much of efforts in your assignments and you know these things and whatever the university is, right? So it is not going to work, right? So it's like that, right? It's not based on the university that you are attending or the people that you are with behaving, it's not like that, right? It's based on your, let's say, if you have the ambitions, if you have the courage, it's, it's like that, right? So that's that's the main thing. There are, there are lots of confusion and there are lots of uh, misleading things because uh, people saying multiple things, it's not like that, right? So even uh, companies doing recruitments, what they're checking is not the degree, right? They are not checking the degree. They are checking the capabilities, abilities, how they face the interviews, how they, let's say, if I ask a question, general question, how the person give an answer with minimum time, right? It's not a, uh, we are not asking, let's say, syntax of a Java, right? It's not like that. So we give a scenario, uh, come up with a solution, right? It's not, uh, it's not like, uh, you know, syntax-based interviews or no, right? So those are the things that you have to master how the thought process that change it's not uh, anyway it's not depending on the degree uh, don't worry about that only thing is only thing if you're going overseas uh, there are some situations that they're checking the degree like the three years or four years degree because in some cases some uh, some countries are allowing only four four year degree people right and if you are doing a third year degree, you need to, you may need to do some master or something like that. It's not it, for, for, for applying some visas and all, right? So that, that is problem. But apart from that, I don't see any problem with the degrees or anything. It's up to the, uh, you know, person, individual performance and individual how you perform your degree. So that's, that's all. Yes. That's very clear then, Mr. Shamin, you're very clarification on, the, on that question. And continuing the questions as about the project manager, so that's a question, sir. Uh, are there any examples of certification to be a project manager? 
Yeah, there, there are there are certification. I mean, PMP. There are lots of certification. Even Agile. Um, but if you are willing to go for a project management uh, role, right? So you can uh, join with some uh, what you call some. Uh, 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 there are some groups, right, who are you know participating and uh, practicing the agile concepts, right? So they are, it's actually a trend in Sri Lanka these days. There are lots of LinkedIn groups and all. Uh, you can uh, be with them, and also there are examination exams like PMP and all, right? So then you can uh, do those things and uh, get that understanding. Yes. Thank you, sir. That's a good answer. So. Uh... To keep the potential on working, this um, we should be updated as long as the technology develops, isn't it, sir? Mm -hmm. So while you're working on the job and while we are working on the industry, and uh, hope to keep on uh, the future goals as a professionals, we are on the future mm -hmm. professionals. In a few years, yeah. what other technologies will be at the peak? Uh, yeah. So. Uh... I think not in few years, even now also, right? So one thing is uh, when it's come to the programming or deployment or DevOps, right? So cloud computing is must. I mean, cloud will uh, rule the world in going forward. And also uh, the serverless, I mean, uh, serverless uh, de developments, right? So, and also software as a service. I mean, there will all the, you know, infrastructure and everything will be managed uh, by automatically, right? So provisionings and all, right? So there will be no manual interventions. Like all the things are going for automation, right? Uh, if you are a QA engineer, learn automation. If you are a Java developer, learn on, uh, you know, um, containers, orchestrations and all, right? If you are a DevOps, that same thing, right? So if you are if you are a de developer, you just learn on serverless developments, right? Those things, I mean, you have to code, um, uh, which will deploy it into a cloud infrastructure, right? Not in your local on-premises, uh, you know, uh, services, right? So the, that thing you have to learn. So that's the trend. And also, uh, I think you have already covered those, uh, you know, things in uh, last sessions, right? Um, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, gaming, those kind of areas also, there's a trend. But I would say overall, I mean, cloud computing and, uh, you know, serverless, those kind of things will, will be in peak in coming days because they are going to reduce the cost of the, you know, uh, resources. Let's say if, if it is, if you're having manual, um, manual uh, engineers uh, to check a uh, system daily basis, that business owner need to bear that cost, right? But it should not be the case when it's come to the scaling and like AWS, Google Cloud and all. Right, so then they will be reduce the cost of the developers. I mean, sorry, the operational guys. Right, so then it will be moved to DevOps, and also now the SRE concept is also there. Right, uh, site release and engineers. Right, so those kind of things will uh, you know uh, come into the picture in uh, even now also there there are a lot uh, engagements happening and it will be continued. Yes. Thank you, sir. That's a good answer. So uh, as we are now here and um, the most we are undergraduates here, there's a proper problem uh, while we are doing our uh, academic uh, activities on some of the subjects, we are doing IT degree, but why do we need to study a non-IT related subject such as uh, statics or maths hmm. while well, you are going on with the degree? Hmm. Yeah. So I think not only statistics, right? There are lots of other things as well. Like, I mean, let's say you are in some degrees that you are learning in electronics and that you are uh, some kind of things like professional matters, those kind of things, right? So I, I will give the answer of statistics that since that you have asked, right? So why is statistics, right? Let's say if you are, if you are, if you are a DevOps person, I'm giving, getting that, giving that example, right? So to have an idea, right? So you need to analyze, analyze some uh, users' uh, behavioral patterns to come up with a new uh, proposal, right? So then uh, you have to identify the uh, outliers. You have to uh, analyze the data, right? There are lots of data analysis tools like Power BI, uh, Tableau. There are lots of uh, data analysis tools uh, to come up with user behaviors, so outliers, right? So to do that, if you're having a statistic mindset, right? So if you do the statistics in your degree, it's a very helpful because I know 
um, once I'm doing one project uh, to identify the user behaviors and there are lots of data set. I mean, it's kind of a nearly 100 to 200 Excel that we have to process to identify the user's behavior, right? So then what we did is we got the Power BI affluence of softwares and do the statistical analysis, right? To come up with the proposals and uh, identify the user behaviors. So this is part of UX again, right? So these are the things that you need to know, right? So then again, it's relevant, right? So whatever the things that you are learning, don't think those are not relevant. All the things are relevant, right? So if you get professional issues, uh, leadership skills and everything, right? If you are coming to the industry, if you know those things very well, it's very, uh, it's very nice and it's very good because we know how, what are the problems in there, right? So, I mean, let's say emotional, emotional intelligence, right? So how to deal with the people, right? So those kind of things, right? So I know there are lots of uh, subjects that uh, in there. So that's, that's that, yes. Thank you, sir. And so moving on with the next question, while we are going for the interviews for our job vacancies and um, while we are showing off the CVs, and um, does it work having a certificate uh, from online and attached on the CVs and uh, getting a profile uh, linked in with the benefit of interviews? It's like this again, right? Those are added, uh, nice to have things, added advantages, right? Uh, what I encourage to do certification is not to face interviews, right? That is a wrong, uh, wrong mindset, right? So if you, if you are doing a certification just to put into your CV, this is wrong, right? What you have to do a certification is to understand the concepts and understand the, uh, get the knowledge, right? So it will be uh, at the other side, it will be added advantage to you because let's say, uh, if I am the interviewer, I see that someone did the AWS certification, right? Then I know this guy knows the things, right? So then it will be advantage, right? But don't do certifications only to put into your CV, right? As undergraduates, give focus on to the subjects and everything that you are in your degree. But if you have time, right? What I'm telling is, if you have time means you are a super performer on uh, your degree. Let's say if you have 3.5 GPA before, I mean, more than 3.5 GPA, then do exams, right? If you have 2 or 2.5, don't do exams. Uh, don't do those, uh, you know, <laughs> certification. Do your exams correctly, right? So that's what you have to do, right? So otherwise, let's say if the basics is not there, no point of doing a certification. If you are having that level, let's say if you are in uh, that level, let's say second upper or a uh, first class, go for certification and do, right? So that's what I'm telling because certification you can do any day, right? After graduation also you can do. That's a good thing, right? You have to do. What I'm telling is focusing, don't give full focus to certifications, right? The purpose of a certification should be get the knowledge, right? Nothing else, right? Because to go for a job, it's not mandatory, right? But it's nice to have things. Right, so that's why I, same thing, right? So if I see there's a guy who did the OCJP exam certification, so I know that he's fluent in Java, right? That's what, that's it's 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 actually uh, 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 based on the person, right? So if he feel like if he's okay to do exams, then fine, right? So it's like that. What I feel is a certification, right? Java or programming languages related certification. Try it. Try go and try do. Uh, if you are good enough in the academic performance, right? Others like frameworking, like let's say Kubernetes or um, cloud computing, those things, uh, try to do that after joining industry. So uh, this is my personal view, right? This is my personal view because I don't like uh, people to deviate from their academic, uh, you know, uh, qualifications and academic subjects. Having a good GP is a good one, good thing, yes. Yes, Samit, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you gave a very clarified answers for the question that we have asked and yeah. by the uh, participants. And I think guys, you all got your questions cleared. And uh, Mr. Chamit, uh, we have reached the end of the session. Would you like yeah. to me add some more uh, yeah, let, session let me, to wrap I, up your I, session I have, today? I, have to add, uh, I need to have two minutes, right? So let me share my screen again. I need, I need to share something with you, right? Let me you know and you can see the screen, right? Uh, so we stopped in this DevOps, right, today, right? So uh, there's a session on uh, coming Friday about the 
developers engagement or developers um, for devops right this is a this this should uh, go and uh, connect with us on the you know uh, communities that you can see the latest trends and all right so those are the two things that i Uh, illustrated version that for the answer that we have asked from the clients, um, from the participants and by us all. And Mr. Samit, it was a very productive and informative session. I'm sure you guys all will agree with me. Mr. Samit, we are very grateful to you for all the effort and for taking your time out of your schedule and conducting this webinar today. On behalf of the organizing committee of the Navigator, I would like to present this token of appreciation to Mr. Shamit Vijayasundra as an honor for your valuable presence in this webinar series. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks team. And uh, wishing all the very best for your future endeavors to all. Yeah. Okay. So Mr. Shamit Vijayasundra, thank you very much again. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank our lecturers and the executive board. We appreciate all of you for all the support you gave us. Also on behalf of the CSSA, I would like to thank everyone who participated for today's webinar and for your active participation today. The Computer Science Student Association of the University of Kalania puts their utmost effort to make this event a huge success. The president of the Navigator, Navigator Organizing Committee and all other committee members and all other people who contributed to this webinar series dedicated their all time to presenting a great event experience for the, for the participants. We all worked hard for around one month to make this event a great, and now that all hard work paid off by turning into a great webinar series that ran out for three days consecutively. The whole team behind this event would like to show their utmost gratitude to guest speakers, Mr. Kushan Sharma, Dr. Kushan Batavita, and Mr. Amal Kavitana, along with Mr. Shamit Vijay Sundra, for being with us to get other throughout this whole event. Thank you so much for your valuable present out here. Now we've reached the end of the today's event. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Stay connected with the Computer Science Association of University of Kalania for the upcoming sessions. So thank you guys. Thank you for joining us today. And good evening and good night. Stay safe.